of enormous importance to the country when that evidence has been handled at the FBI crime lab in Washington. There has been a searing report today about the lab and some of the analysts who work there from the government's inspector general. This investigation is going to have an impact on the Oklahoma City bombing case, the World Trade Center bombing case in New York, and perhaps many others already decided. So first, here's ABC's Linda Douglas with the report. Today's report about the world-renowned FBI lab exposes a chilling list of problems. Scientifically flawed testimony, inaccurate testimony, scientifically flawed reports. FBI officials today could offer few excuses. We regret the, uh, we've got to this point in the FBI. As a result of the lab investigation, the Justice Department has analyzed over 500 cases and notified defense attorneys of problems in 25 of them. Among them, some major cases in which there were convictions. The World Trade Center bombing. According to the report, a lab analyst distorted his findings to help the prosecution. The 1989 bombing of Avianca Airlines Flight 203 the report concluded testimony from the FBI's bomb expert was inaccurate. And there is the case of George Trapal, who's on death row in Florida for murdering a mother of two by putting rat poison in the family's Coke bottles. The FBI lab expert exaggerated conclusions that linked Trapal to the poison. Trapal's lawyer has decided to appeal. And Mr. Trapal uh, should not be in prison, should not be on death row, and should get a new trial. Officials expect hundreds of cases now will be challenged by defense lawyers around the country. There are many cases that are potentially implicated by the findings. I can't give a number to it, but it certainly is a substantial number of cases. Forensics experts say the reputation of the lab has been shattered. They are not the, uh, the, the pinnacle of perfection that they once were. Uh, indeed, on the other hand, they have become more than anything else cops in lab coats. Now, the FBI is going to take steps to rehabilitate the lab. For example, officials say they're going to hire a scientist to run the lab. That would be the first time that someone from outside the Bureau has been brought in for that job. Peter. Linda, thanks very much. The most important current case which may be affected by this report is the Oklahoma City bombing trial, which has just begun in Denver. And the Justice Department report levels its strongest criticism at the FBI laboratory scientist at the very center of that investigation. Dean Reynolds is with us now. He's in Denver tonight, and he's been looking at that part of the investigation. Dean. Peter, there's a big problem for the government in this, and it is that the FBI seemed to be working backwards, taking what its agents learned about suspects Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols, and then tailoring conclusions about the bombing to build a case against them. FBI Special Agent David Williams was cited for relying little on science and more on hunches. On the bomb itself, the inspector general said Agent Williams found that it was made from ammonium nitrate, not because of what was discovered at the blast site, but from evidence that Terry Nichols had purchased that chemical from this Kansas store prior to the blast. Agent Williams estimated the size of the bomb at 4,000 pounds, not from the strength of the explosion, but apparently from a receipt for that amount of ammonium nitrate found at Nichols, Kansas home. He concluded the explosive was contained in 50-gallon white and blue plastic barrels, not from evidence recovered at the scene so much as the fact that similar barrels were also found at Nichols' home. And even though no bomb trigger was found at the blast site, Williams concluded that the mechanism used was the same as those stolen from this quarry in Kansas, allegedly by McVeigh and Nichols. Not surprisingly, prosecutors have dropped Williams from their witness list along with a number of other FBI technicians because of questions about their work. Instead, outside experts, including one from as far away as Scotland Yard, will be called upon to make the case. But with questions now about eyewitness testimony and telephone records that the government was intending to rely upon, that mountain of circumstantial evidence against McVeigh and Nichols may not look quite as formidable as it once did. Peter? Dean, thanks very much. Just to put a period on this for us today, we're also joined by our legal analyst, Jeffrey Tubin, who's watching the Oklahoma City bombing trial and others. Jeff, first with the Denver trial. Anything else you want to add to that about the implications for the prosecution? Well, I think it's just a striking thing that the prosecutors in this case will pretend, in essence, that the FBI lab didn't exist. They're going to rely on Scotland Yard, and that's quite a statement in a case of this importance. Can you give me a specific example of a piece of evidence? The biggest problem is Tim McVeigh's shirt. He, the FBI lab says that there is residue from the explosion on, that, on, on the shirt. 
In the report, it suggests that improper procedures were used in analyzing that. That could be a big loss for now the there, government. I'm sorry to interrupt. There are all sorts of other trials mentioned in this, including some which have already been decided. What's the implication there? I think the implications are even bigger there, especially in the World Trade Center case. The report is scathing about the science, invalid testimony, inaccurate results. That is going to lead the lawyers to ask for a new trial, and they may get one. In a phrase, verdicts overturned, really possible? Absolutely. Many thanks, Jeffrey Tubin, our legal analyst. So